Well, welcome back to chapel. So glad that you're with us today. Today is our third installation of Senior Chapel, and I'm excited for you to be joining us again. You don't have to be a senior to uh, be part of chapel today, but if you are, awesome. We put together a, a few different experiences this semester so that we can meet you right where you are, uh, whether you are on track to graduate this December or in May. Uh, we just pray that you are doing uh, your best to continue navigating this season and this semester to the best of your ability, seeing God's hand in the midst of your experience. And so today we have something very special. In fact, uh, right after this, uh, I'm excited that you get a chance to hear from some of our alum because coincidentally, not only is this senior chapel, but it also is the kickoff of our homecoming week here at APU. And so we do have some alum who want to just share their words of blessing, words of encouragement to you this semester. And so I'm excited for you to get a chance to hear that. And then in a little while, after we worship together for a while, led by our student band, um, we're going to have a chance to uh, sit down. I'm actually going to get a chance to sit down and have an interview uh, with a few alum, three different alum, uh, to hear a little bit about their story and their experience at APU, as well as what God has done in their life since they've left APU. So I'm looking forward to uh, you getting a chance to hear from them today, and uh, hope that you are blessed by both the encouragement video as well as the interviews later on. Hi, my name is Justin Lee, and I graduated from APU in 2019 with a Doctorate of Physical Therapy degree. I also graduated in 2016 with my Applied Exercise Science. Now, I know right now during COVID-19, times can be hard. I totally get that. But I encourage you to right now, be a muscle. You know, muscles, when they're not used, they get smaller, they atrophy. But when they're stimulated and they get worked out, they get stronger and bigger. So right now, I encourage you to be a muscle. Hello, APU students. Welcome to Homecoming Week. My name is Kathleen Johnson, and I am a 2013 APU graduate with a master's degree in leadership and organizational studies. Let me just leave you with an encouraging thought. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this one thing, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Paul leaves us with three thoughts in this scripture. Number one, let's be confident. Be confident in God's grace to help us through these troublesome times. Number two, let's be cooperative. Cooperative with the Holy Spirit, helping us to number three, completion. I encourage you to stay focused, and know that God is with you, and he's, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. God bless you, and I'll be praying for you. Hey guys, my name is Andy Hurtado. I graduated APU in 2018 with my bachelor's in psychology. Um, also again in 2019 with my master's in research psychology and data analysis. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick message to you guys. I know how difficult life can get um, dealing with school and everything like that. Sometimes creating confusion, doubts, unnecessary issues. Um, but I ultimately want to challenge you guys in accepting those, accept the doubts, accept the issues, because um, ultimately that's what we can control. Um, and I think we grow as a person when we do that. I also want to remind you guys that God gives his toughest battles to the strongest soldiers. And with that, peace. I'm Jamie Winslow, class of 2009. I was a psychology major and part of the cross country and track teams while I was at APU. As a therapist, I know that when we go through hard times, we become more resilient. This year has been filled with disappointment, pain, and collective trauma. But each of you is becoming more resilient as a result of your experiences. You are growing in the ability to show grace to yourself and others. You are becoming more flexible. You are gaining coping skills that you didn't have before. And you are learning to live out your values in the midst of confusing and uncertain times. Please just know that you will emerge from this stronger and more resilient than you were before. Hey there, my name is Jenny Godoy Lee and I graduated from APU in 2015 with my bachelor's in psychology and 2017 with my master's in college counseling and student development. So I know times are uncertain right now, but I want you to know that we will get through this together. We will come out of this stronger, wiser, and more resilient. You have an amazing team of faculty and staff to support you. So remember, you are braver than you believe and stronger than you think.
welcome to Senior Chapel. We are glad you're here. You know, even if you're not a senior, um, you're welcome in this place. We are glad you are with us this morning. We're going to start off by singing a song that's been really important to the senior class that we sang a lot our first two years at APU. And it's always served as a reminder for me um, when I'm feeling unfulfilled that, that the Lord is my refuge. And I just hope that if you're feeling unfulfilled this morning, if you're feeling weary, if you're feeling beaten down, empty, whatever it might be, that you would come and commune with the Lord right now in this place. Would you come to Jesus and rest? Because he gives that to us. And so, um, yeah, that's my prayer for us this morning, that he would restore us to the joy of his salvation as we sing, as we come to him. And so would you pray that with me as we sing this song, as we reflect on the goodness of our God? Um, let's worship him, yeah? Let's do it.
Sing us out. Oh, 
love is yours and pour me out pour me out all I am is yours all we are is yours Yes, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It
is well with our souls. God, as we reflect on the half of the semester that we've been through, God, God, we remember your faithfulness. So Lord, be our anchor. Be our safe place that we run to. God, be our stronghold. God, thank you for your faithfulness and your consistency. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. We love you. And in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, hey, APU students, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are uh, here together with uh, a couple alum who are uh, going to be joining us and sharing a little bit about their experience. And so uh, I want to dive right in because I want to get a chance to hear from them. Uh, again, as today is Senior Chapel, we are kind of reflecting on uh, transitioning from life uh, at APU into life after APU. And so we have a couple of awesome guests, alum, who are with us. And uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. And so uh, first, I'll pass it over to you, Katie. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Katie Gedkin. I just graduated in December of 2019, so not even a year out of college yet. Um, but I am a Teach for America core member, and I currently am a fifth grade teacher in Stockton, California. All right, thanks, Katie. And Zach, tell us a little bit about yourself. Right on. Hey, guys, I'm Zach Rudolph. I am a uh, Man, I did not graduate last year, like uh, like Katie, and I graduated, man, I think almost 20 years ago now, which is crazy. Um, I'm a music director and a bass, uh, bass player by trade and music director for a pop artist and for other pop artists and for one in particular, Andy Grammer, and, and I get to travel and tour around the world and the States and hopefully um, bless people with music. It's a lot of fun. Thanks again to both of you, Katie and Zach, for uh, being on this call. Uh, I know that students are really uh, going to appreciate hearing, hearing from you. Um, so I just want to hear a little bit more from you all. Both of you uh, obviously are uh, in uh, industries and a workplace that has been impacted in some way by uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic that we're in. So Zach, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about these last seven months. What's that been like? How have you been navigating the pandemic season? Yeah, I'm in um, Glendora, California. So as y'all know, that is very, very close to school. Uh, could never get away and uh, right around the corner. But it's kind of crazy in L.A. County. If you're not in L.A. County, folks are pretty um, tight about everything. But um, it's been quite a, uh, as I'm sure it has for many of you guys, but in all honesty, it's been a crazy roller coaster. I went from having work and expected shows and, and traveled to, going on to just a complete and utter halt of everything, which initially was cool. It was like, oh, cool, more time with my kids. This is awesome and rare. And uh, so I was really excited about it. So I was on a high and then it was like, oh wait, that means nothing. And then I got bummed out. And then it was like, okay. But then, it was, then it went to, I'm out of money, went down a little lower. It's been all over the place. Then I'm just really trying to take this time. I, I must say though, that I've taken this time to really dig in even deeper into myself stuff that I would encourage you guys to do even all the sooner don't wait till um you you have this time make the time you know and so now this time has been forced upon me to really be, have a chance to dig in and that's been a beautiful blessing and very sobering reality uh, of who who I am when I'm not doing that you know thanks Zach appreciate that uh Katie tell us a little bit about how these last seven months have been going for you yeah, I would agree with Zach. It's been a roller coaster. Um, I mean, I graduated in December and come March, everything just stopped. Um, I was in the process of interviewing for a position um, to start in August and everything just stopped. Um, there was a lot of change and it was stressful um, not knowing what was gonna happen. I was in training for Teach for America um, over the summer, still not knowing where I was gonna be placed um, to 
as a position plus having to move I knew I was going to be in Stockton but having to move seven hours away from home um because I live in Riverside County so moving seven hours away not knowing if I'm going to have a job was hard but um the one thing that kept me going was just trusting the Lord's timing and one day um after training I got a phone call from a principal and he asked me a few questions and within 30 minutes of that phone call I got offered a job and I I was just blown away um just the fact that I knew the Lord was going to provide um I didn't know the timing and I'm still working on that um I like to know what's going to happen and that's not always the case but um the Lord is faithful and he provided and I just I'm so grateful that I am here today, even though teaching does look a little bit different. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, just uh, it seems like the from the moment, uh, pretty much a couple months after you graduated, uh, this whole time of transitioning out of APU has pretty much uh, been parallel with the pandemic season. And so, um, yeah, trying to navigate that. Uh, but it seems like you are doing your best to uh, to have a good positive perspective, faith-filled perspective in that, which is, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, so let me, I wanted to hear a little bit from both of you, but maybe Katie, we can hear from you first about um, what were some uh, meaningful or standout experiences for you at APU as an APU student? Uh, would love to hear that. Um, I would say, first of all, the professors. Um, I was a liberal studies major Noah, um, all the professors in the liberal studies program are awesome. Um, they really wanted the best for every single student, pushing us to be the best teacher we possibly could, giving us a lot of opportunities in the classroom with service learning, um, giving us feedback. It was just incredible how we were given that. And um, people always tell me that the first years of teaching is always going to be the hardest. And, um, I mean, it's not easy at all, but I do feel like because of my experiences at APU and just the program in general, I do feel confident in what I'm doing, um, which is crazy to even say out loud. Um, but besides COVID, like I feel you know, prepared to step foot into the classroom. And I'm just so excited for the day that we are able to go back in person and see the students in front of us instead of seeing them on a screen. Absolutely, thanks Katie. And uh, Zach, how about you? What, what are some of the, uh, the, the uh, moments or experiences as an APU student that stand out to you? Yeah, I have, oh, I can think of a lot. Um, some that come to mind was just quality time with people. Like I made really, really good friends, some that I still have 20 years later, which is really cool. Uh, I had a great time. Like I'm pretty, I try to be pretty passionate no matter where I'm at. And so there was a time when I was working in the cafeteria and we were just having a ball. Like that was back when they would actually let students run the thing, <laughs> a bad idea. But I, I, made, I made such great friends in that, just working through that, that dumb calf job and it was so fun. And uh, also missions, I did, I got the opportunity to do mission stuff and I had never done anything really outside of the state really and then we went you know all the way to Kenya Africa a couple of times and that just really wrecked me for the better and uh, that uh, was I mean that definitely I mean I was just talking to somebody about that last week and you know that was over 20 years ago and so that just shows the effect that that had on my spirit and, and man that was one of my favorite things for sure um, professors Definitely. I love Dr. Boulogne. I don't think he's even there anymore, is he? Yeah, Dr. Boulogne was incredible. God, he was great. Uh, he really rocked me. And I'm sure there's somebody equivalent to him now who's really going to challenge your theology, which was I thought was beautiful, especially coming from a Christian school where, or coming from a Christian school in, in high school. Uh, I thought it was supposed to stay in a certain lane. And he would be like, well, what about this? And I, and I, and I thought that was a beautiful thing because eventually you're going to start asking these, those questions anyway. So it was nice to just have a professor throw them at you with no judgment whatsoever involved. Um, what else? So many things. Playing in chapel. So I got, I got to play in chapel all four years. And that just taught me so much about the group dynamic and 
things that I didn't even know I was learning until afterwards. And I'm like, oh yeah, I go back and I'm like, that's why I'm the leader of the bands often because I've been in the bands in the group setting with the one who happened to have the most experience in that group setting. So people would look to me to like lead the band a bit. And now that turns out that's my career currently now. So uh, that was very, very influential. Now that I look back, having that opportunity before me um, at APU. So many things. Also, my RA, well, I was an RA for one year and my um, RD, um, yeah, that's the one above, right? The RA, the RD, yeah. The RT, I had Cherupon, uh, Cherupon Campovon. She's she's no longer there, and but we are amazing friends still. She really just shocked me on how she loved. She loved people so hard, and I think everybody has an experience or can have. It, when you leave APU, you hopefully, uh, God willing, you have at least you can find that one person in your life, whoever that was, that was just really a hardcore lover, like loved with everything. And so still to this day, she she really taught me about loving people sincerely and really, really, uh, oh man, stuff you can't get in classes, honestly, which was crazy. So um, yeah, I could go on about a lot of fun events that I, I could think of. No, thanks, Zach, and thanks, Katie. Uh, you know, one of the things that I heard that was uh, in common between both of your responses there was, uh, you know, whether it was a professor or two or, you know, RD or somebody or a person, that uh that made a difference and made an impact in your life and uh, you know i think as we're specifically talking to apu students here on on this call uh seniors even as we're uh, focusing on the senior experience you know i i i want to throw in my two cents by simply saying hey take advantage of this time where you have these kinds of um opportunities for connection with uh with faculty members or with friends um, and even if it's a distance, uh, you know, once you graduate, things change. Um, and so I know we're going to hear a little bit more about that. But, uh, but yeah, to hear that, that those, uh, those individuals had that kind of impact. Um, and, and even cool to hear that those friendships have lasted that long. And in many cases, is a blessing. That's awesome. Um, so would love to, uh, to hear, uh, Katie, maybe I'll, I'll toss this question over at you. Um, so what's it been like transitioning out of APU? So not too long ago, you're an APU student now. You're, you're out on your own, uh, you know, pursuing a career. So just want to hear a little bit of what's it like transitioning out of APU. Yeah, so when I graduated in December, um, I already had a plan of where I was going. Um, while I was at APU, I went on action teams. And one action team I went on was to Uganda. And I just absolutely fell in love with the place, with the people, with the ministry out there. and. I just decided that I was gonna go back after graduation. And so I, on January 1st, got on a plane and went out there for two months and just stayed with the pastor out there and served. Um, and then coming back, I remember when I was at the airport, I heard this thing about COVID and had no idea what that was. I didn't have internet connection when I was gone. And I was like, that's crazy. Like, you know, no thoughts about it really. Um, just hoping that it wouldn't reach specifically um, where I was at the moment. Um, and like I mentioned before, that just like shut everything down um, with like doing my interviews and all of that. Um, but now fast forwarding to where I am now, um, I'm, you know, a full-time teacher. I'm also a student getting my credentials right now so on top of you know learning how to be a teacher virtually as well as being a student myself and you know moving away from home seven hours away from my family living with um other people like that's it's a lot um but it's been such a crazy ride and I love it it's so much fun um just learning from, specifically learning from my students, learning from other staff members, and it's crazy what kids can teach you. It's awesome, I love it. That's awesome, thanks Katie. Zach, what was that like transitioning out from uh, life as an APU student into life after college? So that transition was, I think, it was good. I, I'm, I'm thinking back to that, 
how would that be 21 20 year old self or whatever and thinking that man i should i wish i would have done it better so maybe this i'll, I'll explain that and and maybe give advice at the same time but I, for me i knew that i wanted to be doing stuff in the music world but and that was my degree was in that type of thing but i happened to actually be pretty good at exercise and fitness and so i had got like a senior just job to to kick around through um other people who i went to school with there who connected me with i got into personal training so i was into exercise and fitness and personal training and to some degree that actually became my crutch that slowed me down from transitioning to what i really should have been doing so that that was my reality and i hope that it actually just encourages somebody to to take the leap of faith because i for years i was dabbling with um getting out of school and working as a personal trainer but then trying to play music in the evening and then getting up at the crack of dawn to train somebody and then trying to stay out till the crack of dawn and do music or whatever that situation was but and eventually um i got pushed enough uh god was saying like okay man i'm trying to really open these doors for you but you're over here trying to hold on to your money because with personal training i was able to get more money you know sooner so um that transition was like a i dragged my feet it was like a bad, bad breakup you know where you're like you should have let it go a long time ago and it, it is what it is. It's gotten to me who I who I am today, and so I've accepted all of that. But looking back, I'm like, man, I wish I really would have just jumped off the cliff uh, a lot sooner and just trusted uh, and not had to try to be in control of the financial situation a little bit. And you know, maybe I would have gotten here even faster. You know. Yeah, and you touch on some uh, some key key themes there, and as you share that, just even in terms of. Uh, thinking about, you know, that balance between making ends meet and paying rent, um, but also pursuing what you feel like God has called you to. And I, I think that's a, uh, you know, that's a common experience, you know, that students are currently wrestling with, and they'll, they definitely will be in places where they'll have to continue thinking about that going forward. So uh, hearing you share that, I'm, I'm sure is encouraging to somebody who might have a dream that they feel like God has given them to pursue, uh, but it may not feel like the thing that's immediately going to, to pay off in the short short term. So, uh, so to hear that, I, you know, I, I can, I can relate to that as well. And, and I know a lot of people, a lot of friends um, who also have experienced maybe some delayed uh, transition into the, the calling area because of just the need to, to kind of find something, if that makes sense. Yeah. And it's just, it's just fear really, you know, I look back at it now and I'm like, I was a scaredy cat. I wish I had, you know, half the gun as that Katie has. That's awesome. Love it. Love it. Well, that's why we have both of you on the call, you know, so that that could be a balance right there. Um, uh, but would love, Zach, I'd love to hear uh, how, how has APU, how did APU uh, shape, you know, the person you are today in terms of how you, how you live, you know, life and, and, and however you want to take that question, but how, how has APU uh, shaped who you are today? Uh, well, it's definitely, um, help maintain a grounding for me uh, spiritually, you know, which is, which is, uh, God, a great place to start. I would definitely say I'm a different spiritual man than I was when I left APU for sure. But at least the, the solid grounding is there. And, uh, I know where to find home, if that makes sense, you know, spiritually speaking with all the spiritual craziness that is happening in the world today, I feel like I know where to, how to find home and that, and then honestly, I, I didn't just learn that at APU. I had, was blessed to grow up in a home that kind of helped keep you centered as well but I definitely felt like that helped um and then again like I mentioned about love I feel like I touched on a little bit because of the thing that stands out to me in, in regarding my career is just the group setting that was really really helpful to me to be able to have to work in groups have to be in actually be in groups to play music together but then also to work groups study groups whatever um looking back now it's it taught me a lot about people and I didn't even know how important that is until now where like communication with people is everything. You know? And I was getting some of it then and I would encourage you guys to pay attention to that now. It'll speed you up a little bit, you know, you know? Um, because it, it just, that's 99% of, of real life is communicating with people, everybody from your spouse to your kids, to your work, to who you work with and all that stuff. So I did, I definitely got a, a good grounding for that as well. Um, and I was just a little bit aloof at times cause I was too busy trying to have fun in college. 
Um, but I, I definitely felt grounded in that communication skill. I was definitely um, people. People are everything. Thanks, Zach. How about you, Katie? How would you say that uh, APU has shaped uh, who, who you are and who you're becoming now? The first thing that I automatically think of is when I first visited campus my senior year of high school. Uh, I went on a tour with just one other student and I vividly remembered the day I got back in the car and I told my mom, I was like, mom, this is where, this is where I need to be. Like, no, no, re I just like knew that is where God wanted me to be. There was something about just being on campus. And this was during the summer. So there were no students on campus, but just the atmosphere. Um, and I could not agree with that more um, to this day. That was the place that I needed to be. Um, spiritually, I grew a lot in my faith. Um, I took a lot of opportunities and that's something that I would encourage everyone watching to also do. Um, say yes, if an opportunity is presented to you, go for it. Um, I studied abroad, I went on action teams, um, I volunteered in the classroom um, all the time. I don't remember a day that I wasn't in an elementary school classroom doing something, um, which is amazing now because I'm like, I had all that experience that I wouldn't have had if I decided to say no and just, you know, stay at home. Um, so I definitely took a lot of opportunities and that were presented to me. Um, another thing, just the people. I met the most loving and God-centered and genuine people at APU, my roommates, professors, um, anyone I came in contact with, like they were genuinely wanting to have a conversation with you. Um, and I have never had that before. I've never had friendships like I do now um, because of APU and still talking to, you know, classmates. I know it's only been like a year out of college, but still having that communication that brings me back to APU is wonderful. Um, so yeah, I would just encourage everyone to have those conversations, just say yes to any opportunity that is presented to you because it'll be worth it. Thanks, Katie. Uh, I wish we had like another hour or so to keep diving in and asking a bunch of questions, but we want to make sure that, you know, students are able to take this in during their uh, the time they typically allocate for chapel. And so uh, we got a few minutes left here. And I always love uh, wrapping up time, asking questions and interviewing somebody by making sure I give you the opportunity. If there's like one last thing that you would want to just share uh, to bless or encourage or provide some guidance uh, uh, to, to our current students, would love to give you an opportunity. And actually, Zach, I didn't ask you ahead of time, but maybe I'll have Katie share first. And then if, after you share, if you don't mind just saying a word of prayer. Uh, a blessing over APU students, and we'll we'll wrap it up. Uh, just uh, as you, after you share, go ahead and pray, and uh, we'll bring it to a close. So, Katie, tell us what's uh, what's one one last thing you want to share with APU students. Um, I would just say, I I understand everyone is going through something right now, but just knowing that you're not alone in this, um, everyone is experiencing this different. Um, whether you are you know, one of my students, um, a 10 year old, or if you're a teacher, or w regardless of who you are, we're all experiencing something similar, knowing you're not alone, the Lord is walking beside you during every step of the way. Um, I promise you will get through this. Um, keep pushing. Um, I've talked to people who, you know, my classmates that were going to graduate in May, and they didn't get that. Um, but they're all alive and they're surviving um, and we will get through this. Um, so just remember that, reach out if you have any, if you're struggling, reach out to someone. Um, you're not alone in this and you can do it. That was really good advice, Katie. Dang, I'm like, oh yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. Um, the thing that's coming to mind, and it's pretty much just where I'm at, so hopefully it makes sense for somebody where you're at, but is to just surrender whoever you think you are 
and whoever you think you might be and even the plan you have you obviously you're in school now and you have a plan and you have a trajectory and you want to be this or you want to be that or maybe people say you're this and they say you're that they're like oh you're the guy who does this or you're the girl who does this or you know i would encourage you now to get into a, de a daily meditation and prayer and a habit of saying i don't know what i am and that's okay and i don't know who i'm going to be and that's okay and i, I don't i don't know there's something and it's kind of a little contradictory, I know, because you're supposed to be going to school to do something. But there's something about just that daily surrender of like, I think I'm this, but I'm also cool with being whatever else you got for me, God. You know, I think I want to do this and I, I have a plan, but really, really, but sincere surrender, not just saying like, whatever your plan is for me, I'm good with that. But really in every single moment, um, surrendering what you, mainly I'm talking about like the ego of who you are, like let it go, just let it go. Um, you'll be happier sooner with whatever it is you end up doing as soon as you start to let that go. And that's something I'm currently learning and because I've had this time to do so. So I definitely don't got to figure it figured out. Um, but I would encourage you to take the time to get into those questions about yourself. Like, what is my ego trying to tell me that I am? Or people trying to tell me that I am or I think that I am? And just begin to surrender that to God. And um, yeah, I think, you know, once we've done that, man the sky's the limit really you know that's very cliche and what they say to college students but it's true and um I, I see nothing but beautiful things in the future of all of us if we keep surrendering and asking questions you know continue to ask that's my other thing i was thinking about was just continue to challenge and ask and be okay with that you know even ask yourself hard questions and be okay with finding friends who you can ask hard questions with um to just get real with people, you know, not superficial and begin to get real. So I think that's a, a move a way that our society is going to in general, which is just sincereness, you know, and real openness. And man, the sooner we all get on board with on that same tip, uh, the sooner the world's a better place. So yeah, that's my two cents about that. Um, but let's pray, man. Thank you guys, everybody who's on this call and um, Katie, Brooke, Koba, thanks for helping out and making this happen. And to all the students, I really hope that whoever, whenever you see this, I know we're recording it, but whenever you see it, that it really will encourage you. And I mean, I don't know about Katie, but I'm open and available and uh, Cobra can send my email or whatever to anybody. So if anybody's got, wants to go deeper with some of the craziness, craziness that I've said, by all means, I'm here. I am doing nothing, unfortunately. Um, yeah, let's pray. <laughs> uh, God, source of the universe, the, the God who's created everything for us. Um, we surrender this weird time to you. We surrender who we think we may be and um, what we want and our hopes and our cravings and our desires, and we just give them to you. We say that, hey, this, this looks weird for us this time in life. Um, but one thing is consistent, and that is who you are in our lives. So continue to show us um, yourself um, through people, through nature, through friends and family. Um, just continue to, to let us have that moment as we, we tap in to who you are and that that, I, that that would give us the hope and the joy that we need to continue. May we share love and be love um, to one another. Um, and I encourage every single person who's just in the middle of school, like Katie said, to stay strong, to keep it up. It must be very difficult having to do everything online but just stick with it um, and give it your all do it with passion um, do it with the love of christ and we thank you in jesus name amen amen thank you zach thank you katie appreciate the two of you and being willing to jump on and share your story with us so i'm going to give you guys some snaps right here and there might be some who are watching this chapel from home wherever it is that they may be watching it from and uh really do appreciate both of you uh may the lord continue to bless you uh and uh, provide in every way during this season and beyond this season. So uh, our prayer and blessing over you all as you bless us uh, today. And uh, thank you so much. I know that our seniors and I know that all our students are taking away so much from this conversation. So thanks so much. And students, we'll see you next time at our next chapel. See ya. Mm -hmm.